Hi, welcome back to Wallflowers. <clears throat> so, as the title says, Octanarians in the Digital System. So, a couple of days ago, I had a friend, a neighbour, knock at my door, quite distressed. Now, this friend is 84 years old. She was in the army for 23 years, dedicated a life to the army. She's always since donated, supported, did everything she can for army life. Um, she trained female soldiers. She'd done an awful lot within the army system. And as I say, dedicated a life to it. When she left the army, she bought her own home with savings from the money she'd earned. Um, took several jobs, bus driver, a manager in a factory, she'd 100% throw herself into the role of what she was doing and give it 100% commitment. Besides that, she'd go and do artwork, courses, different things, and she'd keep herself busy all the way through her life. She's, as I say, she's now 84, strong as an ox. Kept herself busy all the time, looks after as many people in the community as she can. Um, shops in places like I do food initiatives and when she sees a family within her neighbourhood she'll actually take a couple of bags of shopping over and regularly support families that she believes need support. She can be a bit cantankerous sometimes but her heart's in the right place. She'll take no fuss, she'll take no mess. Um, when she knocked a couple of days ago <clears throat> she was I could see she was stressed I could see she was upset and she's not a one to shed tears she's not a one to show those emotions but I can assure you I've shed tears over this and I've been highly emotional over what I'm about to talk through so she told me her house phone had been disconnected because the funds weren't in her bank account which is quite a surprise because she was always a good saver, um, lived within a means and as I say although she helped other people in the community and donated to charities etc she'd at some point been able to work out her bank accounts and keep different funds separate so she had a weekly monthly living allowance from one bank account and she had her bills and some savings in a separate bank account. I say she's now 84, the phone was disconnected <coughs> and she'd re received several letters um, saying in order for the phone to be reconnected it would cost her £350. When she checked the bank balance there was no funds in the account um, and several um, bills that were meant to go out, life insurance, home insurance, several different bills were being returned. The direct debit would go and go unpaid because the funds weren't in the bank. And she asked me for help. So we got the bank statements, we phoned the bank, we got up to date bank statements. And as I work my way through them, we come to British Gas. Now this lady lives alone, she has several cats but she lives alone um, and British Gas were charging her £300 per month for gas and electrics which she barely uses because she's very active in life and is out the home quite often um, and a further £100 for coverage, insurance, whether it be electrics, pipes etc. So, Mr. Wallflowers went to her house, took the meter readings, we come back, we phoned the company, and when we worked it all out, she was a thousand pounds in credit, just under a thousand pounds in credit. So, I asked them, can we reevaluate the payments, etc., uh, rather than them pay, taking just under £400 off her per month 
we actually lowered it right down to £122 per month. Now that's a drastic difference between £400 to £122. So this had been going on for a long, long time um, and the money slowly but surely it was being depleted from her account and she couldn't understand because she only had a small army pension going in so as we check through the bank statements she turned around to me and she said why didn't the bank address this why didn't british gas see that i was accruing so much credit and <clears throat> then come to me and ask me you know, am I am I looking at this right? Um, would I like to lower the amount? I said they don't. I said it's not old school anymore. I said they're not looking after your interest. They're looking after their interest. Um, if hundreds and thousands of people are a thousand pounds in credit, and that money sits in British Gas's bank account, they're accruing lots of interest which gives them bonuses, which gives them extra money. Um, they're really not going to question you carrying on paying £400. And she was highly confused. And I said, yeah, it is confusing. It is inhumane. You know, they don't see you as an 84-year-old person and the, you know, the services you provide to the country and still do. They just see as a regular income going into their bank account and they're laughing all the way with the interest. So as I say, we managed to lower them monthly costs, still keep her protection for what she needed, the insurance policy in the house, <coughs> still make sure that the bills were covered, electric and gas, and still make sure she was a little bit in credit to any increase that should rise over the next 12 months. So that actually nearly leaves her another £300 in the bank account a month. So we started taking a look through the other bills. And one was a home insurance policy that she was paying £39 for. And during the month of May, that home insurance policy had actually gone into her bank on three separate occasions and taken that £39 out of her bank three times, which instead of being a hundred instead of being £39 actually comes up to nearly £120. So that's nearly another hundred coming out of her account that shouldn't have been on a regular basis. So we're actually in contact with that company and we're actually dealing with them. We want a written apology, we want the money refunded and it she has suffered hardship in the meantime. She's had to have her phone disconnected and she's had to be careful with what she's spending. And a woman of 84 stressing because she hasn't got enough money in the account. You know, it's, called, uh, it's caused her alarm and distress, which is the official words to use in this, this position. Alarm and distress to a lady of her calibre at her age. She's actually a cancer victim as well. Um, and there was absolutely no need for this so at that point that's nearly another £400 off the account that need, needed to be gone um, so she allowed me to thoroughly look at the account so we contacted the phone service and we had them <coughs> dropped she had packages on the TV that she'd never asked for sports packages that she'd probably been paying for for the past 10 years um, she had different things so we took I think it was about £60 off the amount that she was paying for that which lowered it considerably which again adds to the pool of money that she should still have in the account um, we cancelled some of her charity donations just for the meantime um, and she was quite upset about that and I said look I don't have to do this I said, I'm asking for your blessing to do this, to get you in a position where you're financially stable. You don't have the stress. You don't have the worry. Um, she was donating to a cat charity, a WWF, um, doing the lottery on a monthly basis. 
um, and another donation to somewhere else. I didn't stop the army one because she wouldn't have consented to that. So all, all four, uh, we managed to, to salvage and enough for another £100 per month. So I've said once she's fully established and we know where she is and she can afford to do what she wants to do, if she wants to start any of those up again, then just ask me and I'll help her do it. She was also phoning uh, she competition. She was phoning competitions line. that were coming through the door. Uh, when we worked out, it was working out at £10 per call. <coughs> so I've thoroughly explained that to her. And she said she'll no longer do that. <clears throat> now, what's quite scary in this situation is this lady is old school and she completely trusts the bank. I thought if the bank saw that she was suffering hardship and unable to pay bills on a regular basis and having them to be returned, these letters she was receiving for a couple of months. And because of her pride, she didn't want to ask for help. She thought it would just resolve herself, itself and it would work out and the bank would be able to sort out. Obviously the bank weren't interested, didn't take a look at it. And as soon as the phone got disconnected, she panicked then and then she came to me, which I'm thankful of. I'm glad she came to me and I was able to help her. Um, but what worries me now is I've had to explain to her that whether it's by the end of this year the introduction happens <coughs> for the digitalisation of the currency and it'll be cash and digitalisation till possibly next year and then cash will be phased out completely and she hadn't heard of any of it on mainstream TV um, although we're friends we've never had that discussion um, we've always talked about shopping or families or day-to-day -day, um, living um, so we'd actually had this conversation and she was quite shocked and surprised she thought oh my gosh how am I going to deal with that because I said you're going to have to learn about checking your bank balance you're going to have to learn about watching what's in your bank what payments are going out on a monthly basis so I don't mind continually helping you but I'd like to get you to a point if possible so you be able to do that yourself and understand it so gradually slowly but surely I'm going to have to teach her how to do the banking thing for the last three days, we've actually been phoning British Gas, phoning British Telecom, phoning the bank, cancelling direct debits. And of course, they've had us on hold for so long. And then having to give consent for me to talk on her behalf, then having to do the verification and the whole rigmarole for each and every one of them. And then being put through to different departments and having to start again, the whole rigmarole just for those few things to be sorted has taken three days. So she's also got two or three separate life insurance policies that I now have to seek professional help and work out if anything happened to her would all three pay out could she actually take cash from one of them to enhance her living now while she's alive uh, we're going to seek professional help together I'll be with her to support her um, and we'll take it from there looking at the documentation things I don't want to cancel anything and not completely 100% be sure so I want to seek professional help for with that but the whole purpose of this video um, is, you know, some pensioners are, are great with the internet. Some pen pensioners can completely understand what's going on. Um, we'll be able to check the bank balance. We'll be able to check the direct debits. We'll be totally savvy with all of it. But some people, you know, 60s, 70s, 80s and beyond will not have a grasp will not be checking their bank balance on a monthly basis. You know, the cash can only go into the bank digitally. It's the only way it can happen. You know, army pensions, your state pension, your work wage, whether you're on benefits, whether it's disability benefits, whatever it is, it's all going into the bank digitally. And if you can't manage to look at your bank account 
on a gadget, whether it's your laptop, your phone, your iPad, whatever it is, if you can't manage to have traceability of that, and you're thinking you can trust these services not to charge too much, you can trust the bank to look after your interest, it's a false economy. That's not actually happening. And she, she just couldn't grasp why all these services weren't looking out for their interest, you know? So, as I say, I've said I, I'll help her step by step. But you have family members that are too proud and, and not discussing the banking because they feel it's totally personal. If you have a relationship with them, can you start the conversation to ask them, at least are they having traceability? Are they able to use the banking system on the internet? Are they able to check everything that's going out their bank? Are they calling the services, whether it be British Gas, the water bill, the electric, the council tax, whatever it may be, are they getting the discounts that they're entitled to, whether it be through disability, whether it be through age, whatever they're entitled to? Are they paying too much long term or are they paying the correct amount? This money is just disappearing from our severely old pensioners and they're not aware of it. And the only time they would be made aware of it is when they suffer hardship through it. It's a real serious issue, you know. This lady, it, it, it affected her so much because she couldn't thank me enough for doing that. And I was so pleased to be able to be in a position for doing it. But she felt it took some of her dignity. She felt it took some of her independence because she wasn't able to do it on her own because she didn't understand why it was being done to her. She took it as a personal slight, which was how it would feel to someone in that position, you know? So yeah, if, if you can help anyone in your community, I wouldn't be harsh, I wouldn't try and step in where you don't belong, but if you can start having a gentle conversation about, you know, do you have traceability of how much you're paying for your services? Do you have traceability of how often the direct debits are coming out your bank? Are you tracing and checking it? Are you getting physical statements and being able to look at it if you can't check it on the, the internet? I just think a lot of people who don't understand the digital system are just being robbed. They're just being taken advantage of left, right and centre and it's heartbreaking. It's been heartbreaking to see this lady's bank account just evaporate, literally just evaporate because greedy people are just going in too often and taking too larger amount when they shouldn't be. And this is why these companies are having vast bonuses. It's crazy. Okay, I just wanted to share that with you today. And if you can help anyone within your family or within your community, please at least attempt to. I can understand people are very proud and sometimes won't take help until they are suffering hardship. But if you can start to have a conversation there about you might be saving that person's life, you might be saving that person from going through so much lack of dignity and so much stress and hardship that it'd be a blessing in their life, really. Okay, thank you for joining me today and we'll speak to you again soon. Bye-bye.